the way, that's the way it is. Psalm 119, and let's turn to, to section of 119, verse 41. Psalm 119, verse, uh, you know, verse 41. We get into that section of that, and uh, you'll see a little uh, a word up there above that section of Scripture, plus a little letter there. And, uh, you know, again, some of you gonna, most of you are going to have the word, probably, and some of you have a little letter. And uh, we already talked about that. But uh, basically the way you're going to, that is the, um, the, the Hebrew letter V. And uh, it's going to be, v, v, you, you can just pronounce it V if you want to. Some people, some say V, some say V, some say Vav. But it, just say V and you, you get it. But uh, how many have a V-A-A, I mean V-A-U in front in, in that? That's a, yeah. So, you know, that you just say V if you want to, that's fine. Um, we're not Hebrew uh, scholars, so we don't have to worry. I don't think the Hebrew p- police is going to come after us, okay? And uh, But look at verse 41. We'll read this section. It says here in verse 41, Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. I take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will I lift up up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Now, we do know, we know, and let me remind us, that Psalm 119, the whole psalm is about the Word of God. The whole psalm about the Word of God. And it's divided up in the eight verses according to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, so each verse will start uh, with each Hebrew verse, I should say, will start with the, the letter that that section uh, is a, a, a adorning, if you will. In this case, V, and uh, and so we don't see that in English, all right. But uh, we we do see we will be there in the Hebrew, all right. But uh, in Psalm one nineteen verses forty one through forty eight, we're gonna see flashes of light from God's word. That's, that's how I subtitled this section, Flashes of Light from God's Word, okay? So as we do that, there's eight things, and we're going to look at eight verses. There are eight things that we will look at. Let me first of all give you a little bit about the psalm here. This the psalmist wants us to share in his love for the Word of God, his desire for the Word of God, his commitment to the Word of God. Uh, not, and, and, and let's just face it, not everybody even today shares our sentiment and trust in the Word of God, right? Not everybody does. Not everybody believes this book's true, amen? Not everybody believes that Jesus is God in Christ and in Him we have salvation. Not everybody believes that. So, um, you know, basically what this psalmist is doing here in this section of the Psalms, he is taking this and he's looking at life situations and he'll say, okay, I want you to, and he's using God's Word to say, okay, Take that, take that, and take that. The, you know, like you, you know, like you, fighting someone, and you say, "Okay, here you go. Take that, take that." That's what the psalmist is doing. So we sort of have flashes of light from God's word here. So I want to give those to you. Number one, we have the experience, the uh, experiencing the protection of God's word. Protect, pro, experiencing the protection. Of God's word. Look at verse 41. He says, Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. Mercies. Boy, we thank God for his mercies. Amen. Amen. We thank God. And that that's that's what protects us. We we we're protects. I mean, the Bible tells us in Titus 3, verse 5, you know, it's not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us. We are protected by the mercy of God. 
I wonder how many times God has had mercy on us. I know he had mercy on me, amen. And I, I know others that he's had mercy upon. And, uh, he, and, and I'm sure all of us in this room, there's, there's, God's had mercy on you, and you didn't even know he had mercy on you. For example, he didn't allow you to get in that accident that you would have gotten into or something like that. He spared you from something that you didn't know you were even going to get into, but God spared you. God does things like that, amen? I believe that. And uh, so we, we, we see that God pr- pr- protects us from God, from, uh, through his word, according to his word. How many times you get into a, a, a situation and what do you do? God brings you what to mind? A Bible verse, amen? And, uh, and it reminds me, and I want to I, I show you this. I can't do everything I want to do in these Bible studies because, goodness, we dra- I, I don't want to drag it out so far that you, you know, <laughs> that you say, okay, preacher, we got to move on now at some point in time, right? And, uh, but, you know, the book of Jonah, for example, the book of Jonah. And uh, as I think about the book of Jonah, I think about how that Jonah prayed. Now, let me ask you this, and here's a, here's a trivia. When did Jonah pray? In, 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 the, in the book of Jonah, when did he pray? In the belly of the whale. When he was in the belly of the well, he, he prayed. And when he, when he prayed, you know what, jo, jo, and I'm going I'm to leave this to you to find, but yet, you know, where, you know where he, what he prayed? He didn't pray made up prayers. He prayed the Psalms. See, a lot of times in the Bible, when we're reading these characters like Jonah and David and, and the, even these other uh, biblical characters, we, we lose sight sometimes that these people had the Word of God too. They knew the Psalms too, right? Now, of course, the Psalms are some of the oldest scripture in the Bible, amen? So these people would have known the Psalms. And so, and I'll, I'll let you, you go, to, you go to Jonah chapter 2, and you, you can look at Jonah chapter 2 when he prayed in the belly of the well, and you can probably, your study Bible will give to you when he prayed, certain phrases he prayed in the Psalms where it's mentioned, okay? So uh, just, that, that's just, you know, f- you know free, free, don't cost anything, amen? But Jonah's experience in the, in, in, in the well, Jonah prayed the Psalms and God's word became a protection to him during that time. It, it protects us in doubt and despair and sin and sorrow, it gives us the assurance of our salvation. What gives us the, the assurance of our salvation? The Word of God. Amen. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. You know, uh, the, the Spirit in Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How do, how do, we, how do we have the assurance of our salvation? By the Word of God. We have it by the word of God, by the work of Christ, and thirdly, by the witness of the Holy Spirit. And uh, so we see the experiencing, the protection of God fr- uh, through the word of God. Number two, we see the exercise, we exercise the power of God's word. Look at verse 42. The Bible says, So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. The word reproach there brings with it a connotation of contempt, a connotation of mockery. And, uh, and so when people come against us and bring contempt of, uh, about, uh, to, to us, we automatically, you know, we, we feel reproached, right? And, uh, and so they're coming, our enemies reproach us. Our enemies find contempt. They come against us. But we exercise the power of God's word. When Jesus was taken by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan, we, we he see what Jesus did. He, he, what did he do to thwart off Satan? He thwarted, he, called, he, he, he quoted the Word of God, didn't he? Again, the Word of God is powerful. In Isaiah chapter number 54, you might want to write this verse down. In Isaiah 54, in verse number 17, the Bible says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. The word of God is powerful, 
chapter 4 of the book of Hebrews, verse 12, the Bible says the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay? It's powerful. It reminds me of a little story one time of a little boy who's accepted the Lord at an early age, and he was doubting his salvation. And, uh, and you know, and he, and the old devil was coming in that mind, playing havoc in his mind, saying, you're not a child of God. You can't be saved. You're too young. You can't do that. And as he laid in bed one night, he, 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 was, he was told that, the, you know, Satan was the person of darkness and God was the person of light. And so he realized that the darkest place in his room was under his bed. So he learned the word, the, 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 he remember learning the verse of, Rome, of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall call upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Little boy remembered that, and he, and he, and he, he was scared that night when he was fearful of losing his salvation and not being saved and Satan was the minister of darkness and, and he felt like Satan was in the darkest place in his room under his bed. So he got his Bible out. He found John three sixteen. He pointed to it. He threw it up under the bed. And he says, here devil, you read that for yourself. You see the power of the word of God. You know, you know, I've read it. I know it. But here devil, you read it. You, you read it for yourself. I've called. He saved me. I'm one of his. Amen. So the, the, the exercise, the power of God's word, all right? Number three, we have the expressing the proof of God's word in verse 43. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. I have hoped in thy judgments. You know, the enemy is waiting to pounce on us. How many of you realize that? I mean, didn't Peter tell us that in the book of Peter where he says the devil's like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. I mean, he, he, he's out there ready to pounce on us. I told you about my story about cats. I mean, you know, I've actually seen and witnessed a cat hunt. I saw it strike. They strike with deadly accuracy. De I mean, just deadly accuracy. And um, and uh, when they, they they and they they're patient. Let me tell you something about uh, Satan. He's patient. He'll wait on you. He'll wait for a while. He'll linger. He'll he he like he walking about seeking whom he may devour. And I'm and I'm thankful that we we have the proof of God's word. You know, some things happen in our life that tells us and and, and that seemingly nullifies the truth of the word of God. For example, Abraham. Abraham left Ur the Chaldees and went to a place that God said, I'll show you. And he was looking for what? A city whose builder and maker was God. And he never saw that city. He was, he, he was promised a land that he never possessed in his own. And uh, so, but what did Abraham not see? Did not, not see something? No, he saw the proof of God's word by faith. Amen? By faith. And uh, because, let me, you know, there's a verse over in, go over to the book of Deuteronomy. I want to show you this. This is an interesting verse. I, I like it. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Look with me in uh, um, verse 31. The Bible tells us there, he says, for their, watch this, for their rock is not as our rock. And notice in your Bible, look in your Bibles, look in your King James Bibles. You're going to see something interesting about that verse. Somebody pointed out to me. The second rock is, right? It says, for their, he says, for their rock is not as our rock rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. You know, as I, think, as I think about that, I think about people in the Bible that knew that. They say, look, our, our, our Bible is not like the other Bibles. Our God is not like the other gods. Our rock is not like their rock. Little r, capital R. Amen. You see that. And uh, so next time people want to argue with me about the King James, look at that and look how they treat that, 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 that word and that, you know, and that reference. And that reference is a direct reference to what? 
Jesus Christ, who's the chief cornerstone of the church. And, uh, and, and, and we know that. So the, pr- the proof of God's word. Look at number five. Verse, uh, number five. Explore the path of God's word. Now here's where Christian, look, look at your Bibles, verse 45. Let me go back. Verse 45. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. For I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. What is Christian liberty? Christian liberty is not the power to do what I want to do, but it's the power to do what the will of God leads me to do. That's different. Okay? In other words, when you get saved and put put yourself in the lordship of Jesus Christ, you are set free. Paul said in the book of Galatians, you're set free. You're given liberty. We call that Christian liberty. In other words, you are free. And, you know, I'm not really a Republican, okay? I know that sort of, uh, don't, before you choke, I, I'm not really a Republican. I don't get into this two-party system. I don't like, I don't, I, there's a lot about the Republicans that are too much like Democrats I don't like. And, um, and so I don't like to be identified as a Republican. I'm certainly not a Democrat, but I, I'm, I'm not a Republican either. I'm more of a Republican than I am a Democrat, but I'm not totally a Republican. But you say, somebody told me one time, well, you're, what you're trying to tell me is that you're a libertarian. No, I'm not a libertarian. A libertarian is one of those that says, oh, right, government ought to get out of your life entirely. In other words, if you want to smoke dope, you ought to be able to smoke dope. If you want, if you, if you want to go out, to, if you want to go do something out there, like anything you want to do, just go do. There is no moral, no nothing restraint on anybody because we're libertarians. Well, let me tell you something. Go up to the heroin, heroin addict and ask the heroin addict what they are slave to. They're a slave to dope. Go up to the woman who committed, who, 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 who had an abortion. She is a slave to the guilt of killing a life. So the Bible tells us we are a slave to that which bond, it puts us in bondage. That's the reason the Bible says don't go back and entangle yourself again with the yoke of bondage, telling the, the, the Jews that. So that's, that, that's Christian liberty. And uh, explore the path of God's word. Number six, expound the principles of God's word. Look at verse 46. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. I don't, you know, we ought not be ashamed of God's word. Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, If you go over here in the Bible, uh, I I, I like this. Over here in the Bible, over here in the book of Mark, go to chapter 8, book of, you know, I quote these verses all the time. I like you to see them and mark them in your Bibles at times. Mark chapter 8, verse number 38. The Bible tells us what? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh into the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You know, when I think about I'm not ashamed of, the, 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 I'm not ashamed of God's word, that means if I'm not ashamed of God's word, I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Follow me, watch this. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word what? Was God. This verse 2, same as in the beginning with God. Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. All right? Only three things in the Word of God that tells us about truth, and that is God's Word is truth, Jesus is truth, and the Holy Spirit is truth. You go over to the book of 1 John, John continues on in that thought when, he, when he's describing himself and, his, and people with him when he says in, cha- in chapter 1 of first epistle of John, verse 1, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, and our hands have handled what? Jesus? No, the word of life. So if we're not going to be ashamed of the word, then we ought not be ashamed of Jesus. So as the psalmist says, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. And then we look at number seven, examine the potential of God's word. 
Examine the potential of God. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Extract, back up. Extract the pleasure of God's word. That's number seven, okay? He says in verse 47, And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. Let me ask something. Do you like studying the word of God? Do you like reading it? Do you like studying it? Do you like to come here preaching? I mean, you know, you know, the psalmist said, look, you know, I, he says, for I will delight myself in thy commandments. Reading the word of God. I love just putting things together in the word of God. It's, it's, it's interesting to me. I love it. And, uh, and, and, and have a good time with it. Uh, I'm having a good time with, uh, in the John, in the book of John right now. And first John, first John, second, third, John, second, first, second, third John in, in Revelation. I'm, I'm doing a little study, a personal study right now in, in the Johannian, Johannian books, which is John. And, uh, and, and it's real in depth. It's just, I, I like getting in there, in the weeds. I'm down in the bushes right now. I'm down in the, down, down, I'm down in the, you know that uh, when you have grass, they call it thatch. You know, that's that stuff that's built up. Down, I'm down under the thatch right now. I'm down there having a good time just digging around. A lot of stuff in there. And, I, and, and so I'm down in there. I don't know when I'll come up for air, but uh, I'm having a good time with it. Amen. So, uh, and, and and I'm getting in, I'm getting into the Greek and everything else. It's getting really getting really interesting. And uh, when I get through, I almost have a headache because I, I, I had to work this North Carolina brain too much. But extract the pleasures of God's word. Read it, study it, memorize it. Tell people about it. The more you tell people, the more you read it, the more you pray over it, the more you study it, the more you memorize it, the more you tell it, the better you'll know it. All right? And then verse, uh, then we have number eight. Examine the potential of God's word. Look, verse 48. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. Notice what he says here, real kind of poetically. He says, My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments. We have to reach up to get God. God does not, contrary to this modern, modern woke the theology that we see, God does not come down to our level and meet us on our level. Now, he does at salvation. Praise God. He reached way down for me. Amen? But when he saves you, he don't expect you to stay in the crack of the barrel. He expects you to rise to the top and reach up to his word and conform to the image that he wants you to be. That's what God wants to do. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved and I will meditate in thy statues. Thank God he reaches down for us, but we reach up to him. Amen. Examining the potential of God's word. These are some flashes from this section of the psalm of God's word in our life. Father, we love you. Thank you again for allowing us to be here tonight. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies, your tender mercies, and uh, your everlasting mercies. You've told us in your word you'll have mercy on whom you have mercy, and we thank you for the mercy upon us. I thank you for your grace, your love, and your patience, and, and your salvation, your forgiveness, your guidance. We thank you for your word that we can go to and study it and hide it in our hearts that, Lord, we may go out and serve you and be a light in this dark world. We pray you'll use us today and you bring us back, Lord, our next appointed time. If we ask and pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love you and uh, appreciate you.